everyone. Welcome once again to the Waycross Studios where we take over and spread joy and happiness all over. I'm Email the Elf and I am only bringing the biggest man here on this holiday season, Santa himself. Santa, I'm very happy to see you tonight. I'm glad you're with us. Of course, you've brought a friend, a good friend of ours who has not made it to the studio before, but we're so glad you're here. Thank you, thank well, you very much. Email, it's just a pleasure to be here to talk to all the long, young children and to make sure that we can bring happiness to their Christmas. I think we're gonna be able to do that, but of course I have to, be the question begs, Mrs., how did you get to come down this year? Every year, Santa invites me to come and a lot of years, I'm too busy with the elves, as you know. I do. Know that. Supervision takes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that is true. With a bunch of us, yeah. it's true. But we did have some supervisors in place, so I was able to break away, and they should be behaving themselves, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> well, we're going to definitely get into all sorts of conversations, and of course, conversations with you as well. So if you're watching tonight, on December 7th, please call in, 825-3971. That's our phone number right here. We've taken it over at the Waycross Studios, and we've also got my namesake, the email going on as well. If you want to email us, email santa at waycross.org. We're going to take all your emails, your questions, your requests, and most of all, just making sure that you're going to have a really good time tonight. Well, before we get into it, because I've got a few emails already going through, so I know people are already to go, but Santa, are you ready for this big year? I mean, this, is, this seems to be bigger than normal. Well, it's, it's a bigger year than normal, but Santa has prepared for it the best that he can. He's made a lot of changes. He's hired more elves. He's just getting things going faster and faster. He had a nice rest after the Christmas last year, took one week off. After that, it was back to work again. And now we have all the elves getting everything under control. You can tell I was busy working. I didn't even notice it was one week. <laughs> How did you manage? Were, did you allow him on one week, Mrs.? That's all we can take <laughs> is one week. I'll tell you, that time goes by too fast. It really does. <laughs> now, are we allowed to know where you went, or is that something that I'd have to ask my other elves in accounting? Well, I think maybe it's <laughs> best that you ask the other elves. I says, because, you know, you just don't want everybody out looking for Santa when he's not working hard. <laughs> well, that's true, and that's one of the questions I had, I had seen in, in a multitude of questions. I do compile many, many emails over the, over the whole year, and one of them is, is, well, what do you do during the summer? Because obviously, you know, you have one big day, and it's a very big day, trust me, but you've got other things to take care of in the summer. Well. It takes a lot of organization, and thanks to Mrs. Claus, she helps keep the, ev the elves in, in shape, and she keeps them running on a good schedule. And it's all about training, and it's all about getting the things accomplished that you have to do. List your priorities, and that's what Santa and Mrs. Claus do. You basically keep them in line is what, it, what you say. Basically, that's it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> well, we're going to go to our first email because I love getting these emails, and this is coming from Paige. And Paige writes, Dear Santa, I hope you have had a wonderful year and that December is running smoothly for you. I have a quick question for you. Do you have a favorite type of cookie? I would love to make sure that your favorite is waiting on the plate for you at Christmas Eve. Tell you all you, thank you for all you do in spending this holiday cheer. Please tell Mrs. Claus email and Santa Mouse I say hi. Your cookies and milk will be next to the tree with carrots for the reindeer and cheese for Santa Mouse. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Paige, and thank you very much for asking the question about cookies. I'd like to say that my favorite cookie is chocolate chip, but deep down in, there's not a cookie that Santa doesn't like. So any <laughs> cookies that the children leave, as long as they leave the milk in the cookies, Santa's just as happy as can be. Now, of course, you get a big night of cookies, and, and you, of course, are... I've seen the belly when you get back. It's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Mrs. Claus, I know that you, because I smell the kitchen all the time, and you are a constant cook in there. Is he asking for them, or are you baking them just because? Oh, no, we bake because the elves also 
are very, very much into cookies, as oh, you know. Oh, <laughs> we, we don't talk about that. <laughs> so they always are asking for different cookies. So we make them for everyone at the North Pole. And in case Paige wanted to know, I like mint cookies, especially mm -hmm. the round chocolate ones. Yes. <laughs> well, Paige brings up an interesting one. There's all these sorts of different characters. Of course, we know Santa Mouse and all sorts of other characters. She, of course, brings up our big friends, the reindeer. You know, I, I do speak with the, the farmhands. Us farm elves are, are good folk over there, I'll tell you that. But the reindeer, what, what made you decide reindeer? Well, reindeer is just a natural thing that we, uh, we have at the North Pole, and it's so easy to keep them. The uh, reindeer love to play in the snow. They play reindeer games all summer and all winter long. They just love to bounce around in the snow. And they're very strong animals, so they really do a terrific job pulling the sleigh. Now, of course, some people stay up pretty late to check and see if they're, they're actually flying from house to house. What's, what's the secret to the flight? Well, the secret to the flight uh, is to make sure that the Reindeer keep their heads up and they keep their nose up. That's the important thing. When you keep your head up and your nose up, you're always headed in the right direction. I couldn't ask for that any, any better. I mean, I've seen them and they are amazing, but I, to see the actual launch is even more exciting. So if your parents allow you to stay up a little bit, that's fine, but just remember, Santa's always watching. And of course, I'm I'm always I'm being asked, of course, by our other fine elves in in the department if if I like peanut cookies, and that's a no. <laughs> that is just a no. <laughs> I mean, and I know that. And, and that's true. The missus <laughs> knows that very well. Uh, that's a, always a good question too. You know, uh, you you said that there are no cookies that y you won't say no to. So obviously, you're lucky not to have any allergies. Well, Santa's fortunate. Living up in the North Pole, he's not exposed to a lot of the allergies. And when he's down here, it's a lot different. He's probably going to be susceptible to some things. But for some reason, the North Pole just wards off the allergies. And that must be good for you. It's, it's <laughs> especially good for me because we have so many that we cook for. That's you true. Know, so. Our departments are pretty large up, up at the North Pole, and I'm, I'm really excited as we see all the, all the things going on. When, when you first started, I mean, I got my job a little bit later, so I didn't get to meet the, the newer el the older elves. I, I have, of course, been training the newer elves, but you know, we're thankful that you found us, but, but you could have chose anybody. Why did you choose us? Well, it's important that, uh, that you choose the elves because the elves have the skills and the backgrounds to learn what's going on. They know the basic things that you need to do to organize a workshop and to make a lot of different types of toys. They work with the modern materials, they work with the old materials, the woods, plastics, just about everything. So, and elves are just so gracious, they just love everything that they do and they just do a one super job. Well, that's what kind of brings up to a question that Caden asks, is, and Caden asks, with everything that changes, the, the elves were making toys. Do they still make toys today? The elves still make the toys. Some of the toys are specialized, so it takes some special training for the elves, but the elves still make most of the toys, and uh, some of the toys, I guess, probably are, are not the same that they used to be, but it takes more skills and different types of skills, so the elves go for extra training. Um, you know, I don't get to talk to a lot of the, the shipping and receiving department, but I'm hearing that there's a lot of new toys out there this year. What do you think is going to be the biggest one that, that you're seeing? Because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of requests, but they're, they're all over the board. What, what Santa's seeing right now is a lot of requests for the boys for the Star Wars toys. All of the little girls like the Shopkin toys. There are a bunch of toys that are in between for cars and trucks. Still, the cars and trucks are still old, stable toys that the young kids love. And the young girls that are probably eight or nine years old, they're really into the princess-type toys. They love princess dresses and princess jewelry. Mrs. Claus can probably add a little to that. Yeah, Mrs. Claus loves the dolls, mm. the American Girl dolls. Oh, and yeah. Oh, we make a lot of those, and a lot of clothes for the dolls, too. 
And I'm sure that in the last couple of years, and we're still seeing this today because I see this coming through, a lot of people are still asking for Anna and Elsa from Frozen. Oh, of course. <laughs> Frozen is still very, very, very popular. Oh, yes. and, and I know that there's a lot of, as we're saying, a lot of the boys are looking forward to December 18th, mark your calendar, for <laughs> a very big important movie <laughs> with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that the, some of our Elven crew in the back are, are looking forward to some of those toys as well. <laughs> so thank you, Caden, for asking that question as well. Uh, some of the other questions that, that pop through, not necessarily from anybody in particular, but of course the big question a lot of people ask is, you know, what am I, I've got a newer house and I don't have a chimney. How are you getting in, Santa? Well, the chimney's extremely important, but sometimes Santa will come across a house that doesn't have a chimney. So Santa has this magic situation that he can create a chimney, come down the chimney, after he gets all the toys and presents delivered, he goes back up the chimney, hits the magic, and away the chimney goes. So that way, none of the children get left out, even if they don't have chimneys. And, and that's, that's important to know, that make sure that they know that no child is left behind. Every child's going to get something from us at the North Pole. That's right. And we get all sorts of letters, and, and I, I relay them all to you and making sure that you get to that. But a lot of people ask, well, why don't, doesn't Santa always respond to my letter, or, or I don't have enough time? Why? Well, I, I know my reason, because I am extremely busy. I know that these little things are, are great and they're wonderful, but sometimes if you're not around and I can't, I can't find you, there might be a time a, me, a, a letter slips, but it doesn't mean that they don't get their request. San Santa appreciates all the letters and cards that he gets from the children. And every year, Santa or somebody with his group, one of the elves, will take a specific look at each letter that comes in. We can't always guarantee that you'll get everything that's on your letter. Sometimes children ask for things that are probably a little bit different than they should have. But it's important that Santa reads the letters. Now, you may not get a response to the letter specifically in writing, but hopefully, by the hard work that the elves do, you'll know that we're reading the letters and doing the best that we can. Well, I got another request here in Genesis. Hello, Santa. How are you? I need to know why you chose the North Pole to live. Well, I think the North Pole is just the perfect place for Santa to live. It gives him a lot of privacy. There's not a lot of folks that come up there. Occasionally somebody comes by, but not very often. And the North Pole is a good atmosphere. It keeps the elves vibrant. It makes them play a lot when they're not working real hard. And it's just a good place to live during the, the rest of the year. Did you have any say in the, in the move? Actually, no. I, didn't. <laughs> I follow Santa because I love him. But we go wherever uh, he thinks is, is the right place. And I think he made the right choice this time. You know, you know, we like it up there because it, it is very conducive to snowball fights, and, and we, we love a little competition up there. And so, of course, what happens when we're down here, and this is something I don't get a chance to because this is my only time I get to come down here, is what happens if there's no snow, the infamous no white Christmas? Well, you know, it's extremely important that the weather plays an important part of, of what's going to happen at Christmas time. Some areas get a lot of snow, some areas get no snow. If you get down to the southern parts of the United States and the southern parts of the, the uh, world, there are no snow days. So, you know, it, Santa has to do the best that he can to get around as fast as he can. And sometimes that, again, takes a little bit of magic. There's a lot of magic that goes on at Christmas time. Uh, that is true. Magic plays a big part up at the house. And that's one big house. It may not look like a big house on the outside, but on the inside, like a certain other house, it's definitely a good thing. Um, so we're looking here, and another question that has come through a while ago was, Santa, Santa what happens if they're visiting someone's house, like going to Grandma's house, but they don't? Are you going to know that he's not, he or she's not home? Well, email it always helps if the children put in their note that they're going to be away for the holiday from their original house. Sometimes we make mistakes and we leave the toys where they're supposed to be left without notice. 
if the children leave us notice, then we get them to where they're going to be if they're with their grandmother or their grandparents. And we do the best that we can. And we don't mess up very often. If you ask a lot of the children, they're probably going to tell you that, uh, that we do a pretty decent job of keeping track of where they are. Now, of course, we're all donned in our favorite color, which is one of the questions I have to ask because it's part of my uniform. Why did we choose the color red, Santa? Well, red is extremely important because it's very visible. It creates happiness. The red and the white combination and the colorful uniforms that the elves wear are all things that create happiness within the, uh, the world. And it makes it easy to spot everybody in the snow. That's a good and point. <laughs> the other thing is, is that Santa can't get away with anything because Mrs. Claus has always got an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we know that we have to keep an eye on this one. Oh. I know that. For sure. But of course, <laughs> I've seen him throw a good snowball now and again. He is good. He is good. Now, Mrs. Claus, you're, you're, you're donned in your, your beautiful dress today. And I know that some, sometimes I see you in your apron and making sure that you've got all your, because the flowers all flying everywhere. You are baking cookies left and right. Did you have a chance to add to the red? Or did you say, no, Santa, we, sh we need to do dough fuchsia? No, no. I picked the red, actually, uh, because I do all the sewing and make all the outfits for the elves and for Santa and myself. Some some uniforms get made very soon, uh, early and, and are in a beautiful bright red. Then the others we get in a darker red, and that usually indicates rank. I and I understand that. So we've got to make sure of that. Now, one question I did get from uh, an un I will this seems to be an anonymous question, but I don't know if I should ask this Santa, but they're asking how much do you weigh. Well, let me tell you, it, you know, it's important that you weigh something, but I don't know that it's important that you know how much Santa weighs. <laughs> the important thing is, is that Santa gets around real well, and he is perfectly fit to do the job that he has to do. Indeed. Now, we'll, of course, we won't add, there was always the follow-up question. There are usually the two questions you never ask, your weight and your age. But, you know, Santa, you've been doing this for many, 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 many many nights, well, and that's a great thing. But obviously you had to start somewhere. What, what made you decide to bring spread peace, joy, and love throughout the entire world? Well, years and years ago, Santa noticed that there were some children in the world that had virtually nothing. They had no shoes, they had very few coats, they had very few toys to play with. And Santa just thought it was extremely important that everybody have certain things to live with. And so Santa started doing this just years and years ago. And I want to tell you, Santa is old. He's as old as snow. But we wanted children to have everything, and that's how Santa decided that we should have gifts at Christmas. It sounds like, let's see, I knew there had to be a story behind it. It's just one that I never asked. Well, I want to thank Mr. Anonymous for helping me get that question out of you for it. <coughs> Now, we were talking about the infamous chimney and how it's, you know, some people don't have them and some people do. So I've got a two-part question because I don't get out of, out of the office much. When you do go down the chimney, how do you do it? Or are we not supposed to know? Well, once again, email, it requires a little bit of magic. Santa takes a look at the chimney. He realizes what he has to do. He realized that he needs to get those toys and goodies down to the, to the Christmas tree. So he creates a little bit of magic and he gets as thin as he can possibly get and he slides down the chimney. And that's the way he gets in. Now it's extremely important too that he gets out. And getting out is a heck of a lot easier than <laughs> getting in because sometimes you wiggle down. But once you get down, all you do Put your finger to your nose, shake your head a little bit, and up the chimney you go. It's true. And, and he does this at home, too. I've seen it. That I've seen. <laughs> you have to practice. <laughs> I can understand. I really can. But, of course, the one question they asked is that the, the continuation of that is, what if there's a fire in the fireplace? Some people still use their fireplace for a source of heat. 
Well, Santa's pretty fortunate. Most of the time there's not a fire on Christmas Eve, but sometimes there is. And once again, you have to either dodge the fire and be really quick, or put a magic spell on it, put the fire out, but you have to make sure that it's lighted once you leave. That way they'll know everybody is safe and warm. That's true. That is true. Well, I've been asking a lot of questions that I've, that I've been coming through the emails, uh, emails, email communication center. And if you've got your own question, like Paige and Caden and Jenna and uh, Mr. Anonymous, that's fine. Come and join them as well. 825-3971 is the phone number. Santa at waycross.org is our email address. We would love to have you a part of tonight's show. So going through my other bits of pieces of email, we've got not somebody from, from town, but just a generalized question here. Santa, Mrs. Claus, I of course know this question answer, but the question comes to you is, what type of hobbies do you have? Because obviously it goes beyond just making lists and checking them twice. Well, Santa especially likes to play reindeer games uh -huh. with the reindeer. and. We love to get out there with the elves, and I even do throw a mean snowball myself uh -huh. when we get to playing. But uh, it's, it, there's all kind of things. Of course, I do a lot of sewing, Thank and you. I do knitting and crochet, and Santa likes to play chess. He plays checkers with the elves. They play a lot of the toys as they're being developed. Santa likes to try those out, too. How do you get that job? Because I, I mean, I love my job, but if there's a secondary part-time job, I'll take that with me. Well, you know, it, it's fun to play games with the elves, but I think sometimes they, they just feel sorry for me, and they, they know <laughs> that I work so hard that sometimes they let me win on purpose. Oh! And I don't know if that's really the case or not, and the elves would never admit it because they have too much pride to admit that they lost on purpose. Well. But I think the L's give me more help than in the shop. I think so. <laughs> well, again, if a, if a position opens up as, as a toy tester, you know my email. You know where to get well, me yeah, on that. Yeah, but email, you know, you guys work so hard. I think sometimes you make things so good that you don't have to test them near as much as you think you might. You know, we are perfectionists in what we do. I have to admit that. I mean, when we when we first started, before I was email, and you know, I don't give out my real name because that's just not. Well, you don't want it's too long for one, and second, I mean, I started out with emails, sure, but I, before that, I was reading the letters with you, and I was going through a lot of postal, a lot of postcards, and who knows what's coming next. I mean, that's what I have, to, like you were saying, having to test the toys. I have to make sure the next best thing, the way to get a hold of you is always going to be there. And that's why we do these programs, so that we're closer to the kids, so that we c they can have their chance to talk to you. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what kind of fa your favorite cookie is, and we know what kind of hobbies you do, but you two, I've, I've, seen, I've heard some sort of music going on in the, the uh, the, the chalet at up, up north. What's your favorite kind of music? Well, Santa's not too particular. He likes all types of music. He doesn't sing well. He doesn't uh, do a lot of musical things. He doesn't play any instruments specifically, but he really admires the people that, that do play the instruments. And he loves to listen to all types of music. But I think Mrs. Claus will tell you what her favorite type of music is because she's a serious dancer. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Claus loves the old rock and roll. I always like that music. But our favorite together is really any of the Christmas music. We love that. Well, I have seen you do the Christmas waltz a few times, so I do <laughs> know that. And she does do a mean rocking around the Christmas tree, so there, there is a lot of truth to all of that. Of course, now that we, we know what you like to do, I guess we already know why you like to come this way, because you want to spread peace, love, and joy, but was there a, ever a time that you thought about doing something else? You know, email, I'm not so sure that I could do anything else. I get so much joy from seeing other people's faces when, when something good happens to them. I, 
one of the things that Santa likes to say, it doesn't cost anything to be nice to people. And when you're nice to people, you get good, such a good feeling. And a lot of times, people will do things for individuals they, they don't know, and they don't know that it's being done for them, and they have no idea who's doing it, but those people still get a good feeling. Well, believe it or not, we have our first phone call. Anthony, are you with us? He's a little shy, so I'm going to talk for oh. him. I'm his sister. Oh, let's try that again. Are I'm you with here. us? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Well, let's find out what you'd like. Let's see what Santa can get for you. This is Anthony's sister, though, isn't it? Yes, this is his sister. He's just a little shy. Oh, that's okay. All right. Well, what would what would he like? And quite frankly, what would you like? <laughs> he said a lot of Legos. A lot of Lego. A lot of Legos. He said 166. Wow. Wow, it sounds <laughs> like he's got enough Legos that he could start his own Lego plant. <laughs> That's the plan. But I think Legos, Legos are a good toy to play with. Everybody loves to play with Legos, and I've run into a lot of young girls this <laughs> year that really like the Legos. And I think Legos are, is a, just Lego a super titty. toy. Tell them again. I'm going to make my own Lego titty. Oh. Buildings and big skyscrapers. Are, are skyscrapers your favorite thing to build? I never built a skyscraper before because I don't have the pieces for it. Well, it sounds like Santa. Well, it sounds like it sounds like a good thing Santa could do is get you some extra pieces so that you can build the sky skyscraper. I can't promise that I'll do that, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Ask him what you wanted. <laughs> Ask him why he's called St. Nick. Okay, he wants to know why you're called St. Nick. Is it St. Nick or is it Santa? Well, St. Nick and Santa are synonymous. They go back a long way together, and when we first started uh, the tradition of Santa Claus, then St. Nick was very instrumental. So over the years, I've changed my name, and I've, I've called a lot of different things in a lot of different countries. In Europe, they call me Saint Nick. In France, they call me Father Christmas. So oh. we ha I have a lot of different names. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Santa. Well, well Whitney, we, we didn't ask what you want. Oh, me? Yeah. Then my mommy. Then my mommy. Then my mommy. <laughs> I can't think of anything that I want. I think, I, I think I'm okay for Christmas. <laughs> Anthony? Anthony, I have a question for you. Yes? Have you been a real good boy? Uh-huh. All the time or just sometimes? <laughs> Tell, the truth. Tell him the truth. <laughs> yeah. Now, is your mommy a good girl? Has your mommy been a good girl? Has she? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mommy said Well, Anthony, I want you to do something special for me. You I want you to make sure you give your mommy and your daddy a lot of hugs. And the most important thing is to give your grandmas and grandpas a lot of hugs whenever you see them. Because grandmas and grandpas live for hugs. Okay. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy, Anthony. All right. Well, thank you, Anthony and Whitney. I'm glad they got to call in. Yeah. See? Very nice. If you'd like to join in just like they did, 825-3971 or Santa at Waycross.org. It's real simple to do. We'll have a little fun conversation. Just like that. See, look, we're already smiling. Yes. Th oh, yeah. People like that make us happy. It's so nice to hear the young people's voices. Yeah. They always, and, and it, it, it's funny because, you know, we always look forward to coming to see you. And even, even some of us elves get a little shy like Anthony does to come see the big man. It, it's true. Mrs. Claus and I can contest. There's a few times that we've seen a few of the elves run the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, those are usually the ones that need the extra supervision, I <laughs> That's think. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they know. <laughs> Email, can I ask you a question? You can ask anything you'd like, Santa. I've been wondering this for years. Sure. I, I think when the elves are away from Santa and he's not around, that they think of games to play on Santa Claus. Do you think maybe the middle name for most of the elves should be mischievous? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there is a naughty list for a reason, I think. <laughs> and I think a few of my friends started it. <laughs> but 
Um, we only do it because we're trying to have some fun. I don't think we're trying to be mean. We're just trying to have, like you said, have a little bit of fun. I think the owls are just like the rest of the children in the world. They're not on the naughty list. They're just on the group that needs to work a little harder on some things. <laughs> I, I think you're right. There are, there are a number of things we need to work on, and, and, and maybe our, our timing on maybe emptying paint cans might be one of them. <laughs> um, maybe taking out toner cartridges at the right mm -hmm. time so they don't fly everywhere. Yes. <laughs> or maybe putting the wrong things in the wrong sacks. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm only giving <laughs> suggestions, not that I know anything. An e email? He's innocent. <laughs> How much time does Mrs. Claus allow the elves to take off right after Christmas? Ooh. Is she kind of a, a taskmaster, or does she uh, work you too hard, or does I she give you time say off? She does give us time off. She always gives us time off. And it always packs us a nice little thing of cookies and a nice warm meal just so that when we get to the train to get to where we need to go, it's all set and ready. And we, we have our week. Some of us, as we progress, can maybe take two, but not very often. Because just like you, we only get about one week. Well, I was worried. I thought maybe the elves were getting treated better than old Santa Claus. Oh, has. no. I <laughs> Even think Santa worries. I, well, and I think the reason why that, that and you, ha you have every mean to worry because, you know, we like to do our job just as much as you like to do it. So we have, we have certain things that we need to get done. Now, granted, some of us like to go to Florida. We do like going down that <laughs> way. So I will admit. And of course, I've been asked, you know, about, about the Elven Union. Yes, we, we do pay our dues, and, um, you know, it, it, we can't really talk about it. It's very secretive, but just to let you know, it, there is OSHA rules and everything still applies down at the North Pole. That's correct. Well, it looks like we have some Santa questions here mm -hmm. from... We, this is a loaded email from four kids, so this is from the Johnson family. So I was, I was eagerly awaiting this one. I had it in my, my e elven sense. So we're going to go from, for it looks like we're going from um, eldest to youngest. So we're going to start with Allie's, and Allie's going to ask, Dear Santa, why do you love cookies so much, and what made you really just love them? That's a tough question, but I think from the time that I was really young or really old, depending <laughs> on how you look at my age, I've always had this taste for sweet things. And sometimes things are too sweet, but I think the cookie is just the perfect combination of sugar and flour and everything else that goes into a cookie to make it taste good. And besides that, if you like milk, what goes better with milk than cookies? Well, remember the one year when he tried and asked people to do uh, chocolate and he kept coming back with the dirty gloves? Oh, that was terrible. Uh, terrible, terrible. Uh, so, I <laughs> so there you go, Allie. A a Zach asks, uh, I know you have many elves, <laughs> scout elves, stable elves, toys elves, baking elves, sleigh elves. How many elves do you have? Well, let me tell you, Zach, at last count, there was probably in excess of five or six hundred. But the elves move so fast, you can't hardly keep track of them, so it's really tough to count them. <laughs> but my best guess would be probably somewhere between five and six hundred, Zach. That's, that seems about right. I can't keep track of all of them. Heck, I can't keep track of the friends that I have up, up there because we're just all do 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 do. We're busy. We're just busy. Tyler asked, he's five and is asking, Santa, it's a secret, but how do reindeers fly? Can you tell us or give us a hint? And he even kind of hints at this. Is it Christmas magic? Well, some of it, Tyler, is Christmas magic. But, but what I said before was, it's a lot easier to keep your head up and your nose up and stay high in the air. And I think the combination of the magic and the reindeer paying attention to what, what has to be done makes them fly and they just fly so well it's it's marvelous and then of course emma the youngest of three she's asking was she a good girl this year emma i can't think of one thing or one report that i received that said that you were not a super little person 
I think it, being a young girl of three years old, you can't hardly get into a lot of trouble. And a lot of the things that you do are just so cute that I think your mother and father are so proud of you. I do have a follow-up on that, and she wants to know what do you want for Christmas? All that Santa wants for Christmas, and I think Mrs. Claus will agree with this, is that we make as many people happy in the world as we can possibly make happy. Happiness is important, and you don't always have it, but if you think about it, you can work on it and make it a thing of the future. And one final request that is coming from his dad himself. Jonathan asks, Dear Santa, you fill all of our lives with joy, and we pass it on to our children. What is your favorite part about Christmas and the magic? I think my favorite part about Christmas and magic is always the fact that at Christmas time, Santa does a lot of nice things, but it encourages everybody else, especially the people like Jonathan, to do nice things for other people, even people that they don't know. Remember, it doesn't cost a thing to be nice. It's important that you share life with people. And those sentiments, you must know Jonathan very, very well. So mm -hmm. I say put an extra star next to the Johnson house. Sounds we right. can do that. Mm -hmm. I think we should. I'm going to follow up with another question. We got another question for a young from young Arabella, and she's a very special young little girl. And she's asking, "What's your favorite toy to make?" Well, Santa hasn't made a lot of toys because the elves do most of the work. But I think the thing that Santa has always enjoyed making the most is probably the little wooden car or the little wooden truck because it doesn't make any difference the age of the child that plays with it. They all seem to have fun. I see one-year-olds and I see eight and nine-year-olds playing with little wooden trucks and it just makes me feel good that I made that. You know, I had my first toy was actually a little wooden cell phone and I still have it to this day and I still play with it. No one answers it, unfortunately, <laughs> but in my mind, I think they do. Well, those are some other questions, and if you've got a question, you can email us live at santa at waycross.org, or you can phone us 825-3971. be a great way to join in on all the fun. We've gotten so many different questions and so many things going on. I guess, Mrs., you've always been definitely the organizer in the family. How do you get that started, and when do you get started? Oh, we get started right after Christmas. We start all over again, and we go on all year long, with the exception of the week that we're off, and the supervisors are taking charge. <laughs> but that it's always a busy, busy time, no matter when. But all the elves take different vacation times, so there's always a crew working and we're getting things done. Like I said, part of the whole union thing, we do have everything going yeah. on. Yeah. We did have a caller on Email, the I want to add something oh, to that. Sure. Oh, sure. Mrs. Claus has this scheduling book that's about this thick. Yeah. And <laughs> if it was any thicker, it's going to have to be put on the wheels. <laughs> and I think she's almost always got that with her, but I won't let her bring it down here. She's got to have it at home and just don't touch it, Santa. Yeah. Well, before we get to Ben's question, I do want to, you, you, you beg the question. Now, of course, it sounds like Mrs. Claus ha holds on to that scheduler a little bit too hard. Do you make sure she doesn't take that with you on any vacation, not just because we're here tonight? Well, you know how some people nowadays take their cell phones and their iPads and their computers on vacation, they go to work. I make sure that Mrs. Claus leaves the big book at home. And it's not easy to hide that, so I know she doesn't have it with her. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Most of us use it to s be able to see over the top of the table. Yes. But that's just me. <laughs> I do have a question from Ben, and Ben did ask, he's from Clifton, and he's asking if you, Santa or Mrs. Claus, have any n unknown non-Christmas hobbies on the off season. I mean, we do a lot of snowball fighting because it's a little odd. Well, well, we can do that pretty much year round, but it, I mean, not that it would give away where you might go on a, on a week's vacation, but maybe surfing. 
I think I take a little difference. I, I like to play piano, and I like to play the bass fiddle, and I like to play organ music. Wow. So I, I just kind of like music in general, <laughs> but I, I don't get into surfing so much. Uh, well, maybe one day. <laughs> maybe. I, I have a few friends that might be able to, from, from the R&D department, maybe they can help out. You know, I think it's important to really relax when you're taking time off. So I like to just relax, listen to Mrs. Claus play her music. I've been trying to encourage her to take tap dancing lessons, but she doesn't want any part of that. <laughs> but uh, I, I just love to just relax and, you know, just think about things. And I read. I read some books. And that, you know, I think reading's an extremely relaxing thing. I think it's an important thing, and I think Santa wants to try to bring all the kids books for Christmas, too, mm -hmm. because books just open up the world for you. I agree. I, I do know that there are many books written about you, and, and how does that get, get through? I mean, I don't see many people coming to interview you. Well, I think a lot of the books and the stories that are writ written about Santa Claus take some of the truthful things and some of the mythical things and put them together and they're good enjoyable reading so I don't think it's a bad thing to see all the books I think it's maybe something should be written more about the elves or more about Mrs. Claus but you know it, it's just what people do and it's important that the spirit of Christmas gets shared and if it's shared through books then it's really a good thing one of the questions that uh, Jackson had asked here is, Santa, uh, you, you talk about being very happy, but have you ever been sad? You know, Santa does get sad from time to time, and most of the time that Santa's sad, it's when he see, uh, sees other people that are, that are sad. I think Santa wants to be happy all the time, but it's inevitable that occasionally you will see somebody else sad and I think that makes you makes you a little sad yourself. Also Santa gets a little sad when he sees really good little boys and girls that are misbehaving. Oh. It, it does cause him a little sadness because he likes to see them be good. Yeah the the infamous naughty and nice yes um, I've, I have been on the receiving end of both of those and Sometimes it's hard to redeem to get back on that good list. What's the best way to, to make sure you maintain your status on the good list? Well, I think it's important to look at everybody that's around you and respect the, re the authority and the responsibility that those people have. And I think that's the way that children should be uh, brought up so that they can learn to be responsible. If you say please and thank you, that's a real good start for getting back on the, the really good list. Santa doesn't like to think that there's a real serious naughty list. He just seems to think that some children need a little bit more work in certain areas. And I think being nice to people helps you get back to where you want to be. What do you think about all of, I've seen a lot of emails coming in saying that you know they have been on the naughty list and a lot of them is because they would tell their, their little brother or little sister maybe fibs about certain things uh, you know how do you, how do they you know say oops i'm sorry and, and come back because they don't get to act the only time they get to see us is during now or if they write us early on in the year well S santa sees a lot of things that go on even though he's not in front of you all the time i think it's really important to know that Somebody is always watching you. It could be your parents. It could be your grandparents. It could be a neighbor down the street. But if you think about what you're doing and you keep trying to behave, I'm sure you're going to make it back. Well, that's, and it kind of goes with the question Mark asked. Mark asks, uh, when is the naughty or, or nice list a lock-in? When, when, when is it basically that's, that's the done deal? And is there still time as of today time to get on the nice list. What do you think, Mrs. Claus? Say it's never too late. You can always redeem yourself. Always. Well, this little elf may know a few tricks of the trade, and I've seen 
a few things, and I don't think Mark really deserves to be on the mo naughty list. So I say we lock him in on the good list. He may or may not need a few Star Wars figures. I'm just saying. He is a good game player. Oh. He loves a good game now and again. So I think the family could use that. And maybe the 2016 Mahjong card set. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just making a guess. That yeah, could be. That sounds good. Well, let's, let's go into yet another question. This is coming from Caitlin. Caitlin's writing in. Good for her. I'm glad to see her back. And she writes, hello, Santa. I've been super good this year and gotten good grades and made lots of friends. Good for her. I would like a cat for Christmas. She brings up a good question. One of those things being about asking for things like this, a cat. Pets. Well, you know, Caitlin, cats and dogs are a different type of responsibility. I think every child that is responsible should have access to a cat or a dog. But I think it's important that their parents have a lot of input on that. You know, getting a dog is fun. The first two or three weeks are really <laughs> easy. They're a lot of fun. You have a lot of play. But when it comes time to be 8 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and you need to walk that dog and it's probably real chilly outside, you need to be willing to get up and do that. You need to be willing to take the responsibility. Now, cats are a little bit easier to take care of but they still require a lot of attention. So if you're mature enough and you think that you can handle it and your parents approve, then there's a good chance that there might be a cat in your future. A lot, I've seen a lot of things like asking for ponies and especially people living in an apartment. That's kind of hard. Well, that's extremely hard. <laughs> Santa Claus always would like to have a pony and he would like to have it in his house. <laughs> but. Mrs. Claus <laughs> draws the limit right there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a special type of arrangement to have a live animal, especially a big live animal. So if you're in an apartment, ponies probably should not be on your list, but someday you might have a pony if you live on a farm or if you live out in the country. Well, we are getting close to the end of time, so if you would like to join us still tonight, 825-3971 or Santa at Waycross.org. We've had a lot of emails coming through and that's a good thing. We've had a lot of good banter and we've also had a lot of fun with all your phone calls. So please join us. We still have a little time left. Well, you know, we've talked about what you'd like to eat during the, the big night. But what about snacks outside of that? I, Mrs. Claus, I know you make more than just a good bunt cake and a good cookie. Yes, yes. What, what are the things that mis the mister here likes to ask for? Oh, he asks definitely for some of his favorites are turkey and baked ham, and he loves meatloaf. Uh, he's a basic meat and potato he's man. He's a meat and potato yes, man. But I like is. a lot of Italian oh. food. <laughs> oh. But Spaghetti. when you dress like this with all the pretty white fur on, you can't have Italian food because I'd have little red spots everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when Santa sits down for a big Italian meatball and spaghetti dinner, off comes the big jacket and mm -hmm. on goes the bib. I was going to say, and, I've, and the bib is on quite often Often, sometimes. very often. <laughs> You're right, Emil. <laughs> Some, uh, we did get a response from Caitlin. Caitlin's still watching us, and she oh. got a response and, and took to heart exactly what you said about responsibility. And she does admit she's not responsible enough to, to take oh. care of oh. cats. Well, good We're glad her. that you can see that, Caitlin. It's important that you recognize what you're capable of. So I, I think that kind of deserves to put on a, on that okay, nice list sure. maybe something else that she may not know that she needs for Christmas, but I bet you she's going to get it. I bet you we she hope will. so. We hope so as well. Well, again, we look like we're getting close to 10 minutes of our time. So we've got just a few other questions to ask, and, and a lot of them have already been answered from a, from a lot of you. But, you know, we've talked about our letters and everything else. What's your fondest memory of being up in the North Pole from the both of you? I think Rudolph is probably my fondest memory because the reindeer were so kind to him after afterwards. Words. And 
it meant the world to him to be accepted and be part of the group. And I think we learned a good lesson from that. The elves, the reindeer, the other animals, and Mr. and Mrs. Claus, that everybody wants to be accepted and be part of the group. I think Mrs. Claus hit it right on the head. I think in the early stages when the other reindeer kind of, I guess, bullied Rudolph a little bit, it wasn't a pretty thing. And I think to see the other reindeer finally come around and realize that it's not nice to bully, then I think it was really, really important for me. And I said, that, that made my heart warm when the reindeers really reacted. They were, they were good. And, and, and again, I can understand why they, they started out. They weren't so sure who this new guy was, but I'm glad and we are so very glad and thankful mm -hmm. that they did change their ways. But it looks like we have another caller. So let's take our next caller. Michelle, are you there? Nope. No, we're not having. I guess they're just they're they're doing something. Um, but I can ask the question: uh, Do you know the Easter Bunny? We don't get to see the Easter Bunny very often, <laughs> but we know the Easter Bunny. And we know that the Easter Bunny does a lot of really nice things for children at Easter time. Well, let's see if we can get her on. Michelle, are you there? Michelle? Yes, hi. There you hi, are. Michelle. Uh, hi, yes, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Where are you calling from, Michelle? I'm, I'm calling from Cincinnati. Okay. And what's your question? My question is, do you know the Easter Bunny? We know the Easter Bunny. We don't get to see the Easter Bunny very often, but we're really impressed with all the nice things that the Easter Bunny does every year. And I think, you know, sharing joy in Easter time is important as showing joy through the Christmas season. If we're joyful all year long, it sure makes life a lot more fun. Michelle, is there anything you would like for Christmas this year? For Christmas this year, I would like lots of toys and surprises. I think surprises are the most fun to get at Christmas mm -hmm. time. If you knew exactly what you were getting for Christmas, it wouldn't be a surprise, but getting and opening things that really shock you are just so much more fun. All right. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. We will look forward to seeing you this Christmas. I know this man's going to be dropping by soon, so thank you for calling. Thank you. Well, it looks like we're running down to the last part of the, the minute, so I think we should probably wish the children well. So why don't you each of us give a good wish to the children before we leave? Well, I wish for all of you a very, very Merry Christmas, and I wish for all of you happiness in your families and in your extended families. And so God bless you all. And I think that it's important that everyone treat everyone nice in the world. I wish that everybody could be friends, that we would never have enemies, and that everything would just be as fun as it could be. And may God bless you, and Merry Christmas to all. Well, thank you, Santa, for giving us the opportunity to come down here. It's only once a year, but it's so thank we're so thankful to have Waycross allow us to come in, steal a little bit of time just to be able to say all the wonderful things to the kids all around the world watching, which gives me the opportunity to thank all of the people who emailed us, especially Jackson, Jaden, Actually, let's try this again. Actually, Jackson, Caden, Jenna, I want to thank Paige for writing in, and Mark and Jen, and of course, sweet little Arabella, and of course, Zach and Allie and Taylor and Emma, as well as, I'm going through my entire list here, of course, Caitlin, Aaron, Jonathan, Nathan, Paige, and Randy. I want to thank sure. all of you for joining all of us because we don't get that much time. Mm -hmm. So to be able to say thank you for everything that they do for us and everything that we hope to do for them. We really appreciate the opportunity to
talk to so many people throughout the, the country and to really enjoy this holiday season. And thank you, email, so very much for helping us out. <laughs> You're welcome. It's, it's not easy to, to do all the time, but there's a lot of communication to get through. And to be able to do this, to, to do what we do here is just amazing. So thank you for coming together tonight. And I want to thank all of you for joining us as well. Until next Christmas, remember, happy holidays, and we'll see you soon. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs>